Hi, good evening. Tonight we're looking at a Luseco LED rechargeable 10 watt inspection torch. Uh, very, very good. Um, Cobb LED, uh, dual magnets, one, uh, a set of magnets either end, two brightnesses, three if you include off. Uh, comes with a 12 volt uh, charger adapter for the car, also a 240 volt plug in the wall type power supply for it. Um, we'll open it up and we'll have a look. I do hate these blister boxes, I cut your hands to ribbons if you're not careful. So, do go a little bit steady with it. Right. Okay, now we've got the Luceco torch um, out of its box. You can see it comes with a 12 volt adapter for, for the car. Also the UK main standard plug top adapter um, that, that'll be suitable for charging it uh, when you're in the, in the home. It's a thousand lumen torch, uh, 10 watts it claims, um, 6500K uh, color, so it's a cool white torch. Uh, two and a half hours at maximum output uh, usage time with a five hour charge time. Uh, on the ends of the torch, both ends, uh, you've got a ratchet mechanism which allows you to position the torches or the torch in sort of any conceivable position you need um, for while you're using it. Um, and you use the two magnets on the end here, uh, likewise you've got two on the other end uh, to stick it to a ferrous metal surface. Now I found these magnets do pop out of the bases. Uh, I've only ever had to glue them back once, uh, so be aware of that. You may find if you've got to look at sticking to a car, um, you come in for your tea and you find out there's a magnet missing. Well, you know where the magnet is, it's still stuck to the car. So be on the lookout for when you have this from new. These do pop out. Uh, likewise here, the ratchet mechanism. At the moment, this is brand new torch. It's very stiff, very rigid, which is what you want. Uh, after a few few hours usage on the one I have at work this loosened off uh, to the point it wouldn't support itself when you, you stuck it down to magnet uh, to a metal surface like that luckily these uh, green covers they pop off and you'll find there's a positive drive screw under that you can just nip up and since I've done that on the first occasion I haven't, I haven't had the problem again so that's all good yeah multi position so if you're under a bonnet of a car you can simply do that and turn that as uh, need be and yet yeah, virtually any position you need as you, as you can see it's not the best demonstration but you get the point I think it is capable of supporting its own weight so if that was on a ferrous surface metal surface that's quite capable of standing up on its own which is great so the magnets are very strong on the rear side of the torch You've got two hooks which will turn 360 degrees so if you've got nowhere convenient to stick it to using the magnets then these two hooks uh, you can more likely find somewhere to hook those and support the torch they'll just clip back out of the way they have not used those but they are there they would be useful uh, what i do like about this you've got a four led uh, symbol there indicating battery level so I'll show you that. We'll plug this into the mains and you'll get the idea what I'm talking about. Bear with me a second. All right, here we go. Uh, I like the indication there. It gives you an idea of uh, how much battery life you've got left in there. Uh, four LEDs after it claims up to five hours charge time. Um, all those four lights will be illuminated indicating you've got a full battery so you should get two and a half hours use minimum out of it at maximum output so uh, if you put on a half load then working the hours out on figure you've got five hours usage but I've not put that to the test yet um, one thing I do find a little bit annoying with this the dust cap 
Uh, I'll call it a dust cap because this torch isn't waterproof. It's only rated to IP20. Uh, so you'll get water if you're outside in the rain um, entering the torch. So I would call this a dust cap, not a, not a waterproof cap. But going back to my point, I find that annoying because if you hold the torch, as I do there, so you've got access to the switch, my finger will always push that dust cap out. So I'm always putting the dust cap back in, then a second later it's back out again. So that, that's only one little bugbear I got out of that. But you know, that's nothing in, in comparison to the light output, which is phenomenal. Really, really good. Um, can't really demonstrate on, on the camera how bright it is, but trust me, that's good. Uh, the LED strip is made up of 60 LEDs, 60 individual LEDs wired in serial, series and parallel. Um, I could open the torch up and show you inside and break it down a little bit. I've done that with the other torch I have. This torch I'm not going to take apart because there are clips along the body here which are sort of one-time clips. I wasn't successful in uh, dismantling the torch without doing any damage to it, so as this is a brand new one, I can't show you inside, but there is a driver board, there is the LED module itself, uh, nothing really else to write home about. Uh, in a few moments, I'm gonna power this up um, and reflect the lens or the, the, uh, the LEDs into a piece of glass and you'll be able to see the individual LEDs a little bit clearer. But yeah, certainly, I I do like the torch, I must admit, I do like the torch. It's a little bit bigger than I thought. I'm guessing, and I am only guessing, it's about 14 inches long. Um, it's 7.4 volt lithium battery in there. Capacity is uh, 2600 milliamp hours. Charging voltage to it is 12 volts. Um, you've got a battery um, adapter for the car. You've also got a mains adapter that comes with it, as I say. Um, two and a half hours output on the highest setting um, and five hours charge time. I think I have said it's got two settings, three if you include off. So you got highest brightness, half brightness and off. So yeah, we'll go over to that little demo I was talking about and you'll be able to see uh, what I'm on about. Right, sorry for the free hand work here, but there's the torch. Um, with this light being reflected into a piece of tinted glass and I'm videoing the tinted glass, not the torch directly and you can see the individual chips um, in the strip there are 60 there um, now if we go back to normal camera um, I'll, I'll explain that a little bit more yeah, further to what I was saying the LED strip here is uh, made up of 60 individual LEDs wired in series and parallel when you switch it on, it just looks like one continuous beam. It's not. Um, it's, it's individual LEDs. Now, over the years, I've worked on various machines which are lit up by high-pressure sodium lamps above in the, in the ceiling void. And I've noticed where those lights reflect onto the glass or plastic surfaces of the machines I'm working on, uh, you get a very, very detailed outline of the lamp that's lit up above you uh, without the blinding light. Uh, and you can perform a similar task with, with this lamp or other lamps like this Cobb LED. Uh, if you light them up, turn it over, reflect onto a piece of glass, uh, all the LEDs become visible to you without blinding you. Uh, same thing applied there. I didn't have it come across on video as well as I would have liked, I'm afraid, uh, due to the nature of the camera I'm using. But try that. If you've got a Cobb LED like this, um, Turn it on, shine it into a piece of glass, and look at the piece of glass, and you'll see the reflection coming back. This will all be broken up into single LEDs. But if you found that interesting, great, give me a thumbs up. There'll be more videos on the way.